Hi everyone, um, we are at the Erlang Music Conference uh, and I have Klaus, Peer, Wolf and Tino with me. Um, they work on embedded stuff and we're going to have a little chat about how Erlang fits in embedded applications today. So I think first of all, Wolf, what do you think the challenges are in today's connected society and uh, internet of things and um, what, what do we have to take into account when we're designing new embedded systems? Well, I think the uh the whole, if you talk about connected devices, I mean, obviously, you're implying some form of communication. And uh, if you also add the mobility to that, you will expect these, the software to be able to handle communication over various different forms of uh, transport, uh, spotty communication, you go out of coverage, you know, uh, may you, uh, you may be on expensive, data transports and um, so this means your software will have to be able to respond to a lot of changing changes in environment and uh, coordinate events and um, this is an entirely different style of programming than the batch style programming that most people are used to and, um, and this is an area where Erlang fits extremely well because it is exactly the type of coordination problems that, that Erlang was designed for. Uh, so for an Erlang programmer, this is, this is fun. This is what we've been waiting for. This is <laughs> finally the world is starting to look like uh, we wanted it to look already in the 90s. Uh, so, uh, so we're having fun. I expect a lot of other people are not really because they, they see these new opportunities, but they don't know how to write code for it. So, Tina, how do you see Erlang fitting into the equation? Um, the challenges I've just described and sort of answered your question as well. Uh, kind of. I, I generally <laughs> agree with Hope that um, one aspect which really uh, makes Erlang shine in the embedded domain is that it helps uh, with all the connectivity and, and communication between embedded devices and back end services. A second aspect which, uh, from my perspective, is really uh, important is that embedded devices become more and more heterogeneous as well as you know, multiple, you know, multiple movements are starting on embedded devices with four core ARM clusters being available. So if you look at the tool chain uh, or general toolbox which developers have available to them, um, the tools really lack support for these developments, right? So ARM is going to come out with a new um, new CPUs which actually have more cores and diverse cores with uh, really small scale cores as well as big cores for big computation. And there's really no idea how a developer will actually be able to make use of that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where Erlang kind of fits in and, and will allow developers to um, develop on a much higher level than they used to be. Um, and then underneath that will somehow translate to a, a really good implementation which then uh, scales down to, to small scale processors as well as really big ones in the embedded domain. Okay. Peter, you already use Erlang as part of your uh, embedded products. Could you tell us a bit about how you came to um, do that? I mean, to, find, to figure out Erlang was the fit for your application? Um, actually, it was by accident. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lucky accident. I, I planned to, to, to build one version of the product distributed, so being self-networked to each other, to, so it, it can flexibly scale. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started looking at Erlang, because I was like looking uh, at Erlang from afar, but so I just tried using it, and I gave myself four weeks for the for, for into the project where I had to decide if I go back to the old code. Or go on with Erlang, and um, what what I actually expected and hoped uh, would be that the uh, uh, productivity with Erlang would be so high that uh, I won't go back. And yeah, it was true. Yeah, that's good to hear. Uh, Klaus, you're from the Aarhus University. Um, do you see Erlang as being a tool for teaching concurrency um, and maybe getting embedded your embedded students to play around with it? Yeah, definitely. I, I think so because I can see that they have great difficulties with uh, developing uh, control systems uh, using C and uh, C++ maybe uh, because it's, it's hard to abstract 
uh, this parallel thing that you need to control. I think uh, Alan could be a great help there. I haven't introduced Alan yet, but uh, I intend to. You should have a talk later about this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so thank you very much everyone. Uh, we're at the Erlang User Conference and um, this was Embedded Erlang. I think this is episode four. So see you at the next one.